Hello, Anik Hod here, and today we're going to be pulling apart arguably the best weapon in Rust, the AK-47. We'll go through the recoil, the attachments, the advantages and disadvantages into using this great rifle. I'll even give you some tips on how to use it better. So the AK needs a level 3 workbench to craft. It costs 50 high qual, 4 springs, 200 wood and a rifle body. You can use any 5.56 ammunition in the AK, from standard to high velocity, incendiary rounds and finally explosive which is commonly used for cheap raiding. The first test we're going to go through is the recoil. If you free fire the weapon you'll always get the same pattern every time which is a backwards S shape. It's the same pattern aiming down sights or hip firing so if you memorize the shape of the recoil you can learn easily how to manage the weapon kit turning your aiming almost laser like. For example you can see that you'll need to move your mouse down a little when firing then left then right etc and that should keep your aim on point. It does take a little bit of practice but it's something definitely worth learning. There is some attachments that will make it a little bit easier but remember if you learn to manage the recoil without any attachments and then you slap on an attachment that reduces recoil or changes the fire rate for example it will mess up your muscle memory and could leave you having to learn from scratch again. My advice is once you've found a setup you like stick with it and don't go changing parts willy-nilly. Now the laser's job is to reduce weapon sway giving you an accuracy boost of 44%. I'm not going to go deep into weapon attachments in this video or the video will last for hours. Instead I'll take you through a quick rundown and if you want to see in-depth weapon attachment guides let me know in the comments down below and I'll make them as soon as I can. Now the laser does nothing if you stood still as you can see it's more designed to keep your weapon steady while you're strafing left and right in a firefight. This is how you should be firefighting to make it harder for your opponent to get you. So don't stand still if you're in a firefight and the laser will keep you steady. The next attachment is the muzzle brake and this is purely designed to lower recoil. It does this by lowering the velocity, in turn lowering the damage and it will also lower the accuracy. I see the muzzle brake as being training wheels for your weapon just to get you used to it and to get you used to managing the recoil. You can clearly see the recoil is extremely small and this is without me even trying to fight it this is just free firing if you're experienced it's a good idea not to use the muzzle brake if you're a new player don't have the time or the motivation to learn AK's recoil then I'd recommend using the muzzle brake it might take an extra shot to down your opponent due to the lower damage and velocity but you can almost guarantee you'll get more rounds on target the next attachment you can use is the muzzle boost it increases fire rate by 10% but will reduce the velocity and damage also by 10% I'll show you a side by side comparison so you can see how much faster the AK can mag dump while using the muzzle boost. Now as you can clearly see there's next to no difference in time and for me the loss of power and velocity really doesn't make using the muzzle boost worth it. If you were using an M249 for example it will probably be worth it as you could shave a second or two off with the 100 round mags but for a 30 round mag in the AK I just wouldn't bother. The next attachment is one all us raiders are familiar with and that's the silencer. It greatly reduces damage and velocity by 25% in exchange for improving accuracy by 33% it will also reduce the recoil by 20% the most important thing about the silencer is it does exactly what it says on the tin it will greatly reduce the sound of your weapon when firing it's especially handy when you're using it for raiding with explosive rounds counter raids have to be reasonably close to you before they're able to hear what you're doing making it an almost essential raiding tool just make sure you're going to bring a couple with you because they don't last forever and they will break especially with explosive rounds. Now there's quite a few sights you can use on the AK. For example you can use the bog standard iron sights which are really common mainly because they're really good and they'll give you a nice open sight picture to look through. Secondly you've got a simple handmade sight. Personally I can't stand this sight. I don't think I'm the only one in that group. I think the main issue is the big black donut that you get blocking your view to everything. The simple handmade sight has improved over the while 
cross. It used to be a little cross, now it's a little stick, but it's still not great. If you're not happy with that, you can move on to the eight times sight. It gives you a bit more of an advantage over long ranges, and it's also pretty decent at medium ranges. At close range, I probably wouldn't recommend using it because it's quite hard to get a target acquisition using it. If you need something for a sort of close to medium range, you can use my favorite, which is a holographic sight. You get a really nice sight picture. It's really common. I think you can get holographic sights in most video games, and I think it's just a little bit more modern. Now, if you want to go to an extreme and push out to a really far range, get a bolty. No, I'm joking. Use a 16 time sight, really good at long range, quite good at medium range as well. But this is if you want to have random pot shots at people from quite a distance away, especially if you're attaching it to an AK and not have to deal with any or much accurate return fire. Now we lightly touched on the explosive rounds before and one thing to remember about these is the fact that they quickly wreck your gun. For example a brand new AK will break before you can get through two soft side stone walls meaning you either need a workbench to repair them or bring a couple of spares. Now the final test is probably one you've all been waiting for and it's a damage test. For this one we did a close, a medium range and a long range. We chose naked and also high quality metal. You might be wondering why high quality metal. Well, generally speaking, when it gets to that sort of time of the wipe where everyone's running around in AKs, everyone is also running around in high quality metal armor. So I won't make you sit through all of the testing. Instead, I'll get up the results now so you can see exactly what's happening. And as you would have expected, the AK is proven to be extremely powerful. So it takes a single shot in the head if you're naked and two shots in the head if you're armored. Three shots in the body if you're naked, four shots in the body if if you're armoured, four shots in the limbs if you're naked, five shots in the limbs if you're armoured. So yes, it's definitely worth wearing armour. Medium range is surprisingly exactly the same as the close range, so we're not going to bother with that one, and instead we're going to move straight onto the far range where it gets a little bit more interesting. So a far range, it'll take two shots in the head if you're naked, three shots if you're armoured, three shots in the body if you're naked, five shots in the body if you're armoured, four shots in the limbs if you're naked, and six shots in the limbs if you're armoured. So I've put them side by side for you there so you can just compare them at a close and far range. And in the meantime, we can push another extreme. So we've got like a little bit of a bonus round for you here. And it's um, the absolute full suit of armour. You know, the heavy armour, what makes you walk at one mile an hour. And there's something very interesting about this one. And it's the simple fact that body shots do more damage than head shots. So if you have got someone in a suit of armour running towards you, don't go for the head, just go for the body and you'll drop them quicker. So close range, the head does 10 damage, the body does 12 damage and the limbs do 5 damage. And at a far range, the head does 8 damage the body does 10 damage and the limbs do 4 damage. Now I've tried to make the video as short but as interesting as possible. Nothing worse than YouTubers that have you talking for 10 minutes before they get into the actual video. If you did enjoy the video, please consider leaving a like. That makes me know I'm doing a decent job and I'll make similar content going forward. If you want to see that content, feel free to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter if you want to see what I'm up to. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see thumbnails for videos that haven't even been released yet, so you can see what's coming up. I do stream intermittently every Monday at half past six on either Twitch or YouTube. So if you're watching this video at time of release, feel free to swing by and say hi. And again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.